Hi there, Simon from SamWoods.com. Uh, I slightly thwarted this afternoon. Uh, my son has disappeared off for a week's holiday and he's taken my stock of rechargeable batteries with me. Uh, so I started filming this on my uh, normal camera and the batteries ran out and I thought, ah, so I'm filming this on my phone. Uh, and uh, so uh, I set off filming it and uh, halfway through uh, wine number six, six out of seven, uh, the phone rang and I had cut me off. Anyway, so, third time lucky. Let's just set in. So I've tasted them all already and uh, I've, I've got my opinions. Let's see if I can get them over across in a nice, concise manner. Six Sauvignons, seven wines in total though. The seventh being uh, a wine from the Loire Valley. Uh, that's why I plonked it in with the Sauvignons. They, they are, they've got lots of Sauvignon there. And this is Cour Chevenie, um 2010, Le Petit Chambord par François Cazin, and it says on Vendange Manuel, uh, which means it's been picked by Spaniards. No, it doesn't mean that. Well, this is made from the Romorantin grape, and if you'd said to me uh, that this this was Chenin Blanc, it's got those uh, the, the similar aromas. That's like nutty uh, apple character, and with a herby fennel character uh, there in, in in there too. Also, and again, I get this on some Chenin. Uh, have you ever, um, well, men I'm talking to here, have you ever put your, your hand too close to a naked flame and you get uh, the singe the hairs on the back of your hand and there's that slight, um, yes, the burnt hair smell. A little touch of that sounds uh, not very nice. Well, actually, um, it's, um, it, it smells intriguing. Let's taste it. And as with Chenin Blanc, it's got that nice mixture of richness and... Um, uh, acidity to hold it all together. Maybe not as taut and crisp as uh, as some Shannons can be, uh, but flavour-wise, um, rounded, ripe apple. Ever, some ever so slightly cooked apple. It's not those. It's not green apples. There is a touch of the uh, the green apples, but it's more on more on the Cox's end. Um, and then this this nuttiness, this creaminess. I'm not sure whether they've. Uh, uh, they've done a little bit of uh, lees aging here to add uh, extra bulk to the wine, uh, but um, it's coming across with herby richness and restraint. It says on the back of the bottle, keep um, can can be kept five to ten years. Well, to be honest, it's coming up for its third birthday here, and it's looking pretty smart, so uh, I wouldn't bother keeping it. Um, wine number two, uh, Etoile de Nuit Sauvignon Blanc, Vin de France, two thousand and eleven. Well, the idea of Van de France is that um, it, I mean, it's a category that's I can't remember when it was introduced, 2008, 2009. Um, uh, you are able, you're now able to blend wines from different part of, parts of France uh, and not just have to limit it to, to being called Van de Table. Um, so, uh, what they, for a Sauvignon, for example, what they tend to do is have something, a mixture between somewhere where I think everything gets nice and ripe and something that adds a little bit of freshness. Here, actually, it smells like it's more on that fresher side, so. Maybe they've uh, uh, they've blended. I don't know, it's Loire and Gascony. I'm, I'm not sure, uh, but it, it it feels like it's on that citrusy edge. Um, uh, some herbs in there. Uh, if I have a concern, it's 2011 here, um, and I'd almost be wanting to see 2012. I think 2012 would have a little bit even more perkiness. Let's taste it, and it's okay. Um, I'm not jumping up and down. There's a. It feels like there's quite a bit of Loire stuff in there. I don't, well, this is where I'm proved drastically wrong, but um, there's a slight nutty. I, I think there's a, a, a there's a, there's some sulphur issues going on there, which uh, it's it's okay. Uh, but as I say, I would I, I think a 2012 would uh, be much fairer to the wine and uh, should have tasted this uh, quite a few months ago. Hey, uh, wine number three. Uh, so still in France, uh, Bordeaux Sauvignon this time. 2012, uh, and it's in Aldi's The Exquisite Collection. Bordeaux Sauvignon, uh, for me, compared with Loire Sauvignon, uh, it tends to be a little bit richer, and alcohol-wise, uh, if the first one was the Loire, uh, that's 11.5%. This is 12%. Um, so um, here I stick my nose in, and there's, um, there's a rounder, juicier, uh, ripe citrus, but there's also a, a, a character I, I get in a lot of uh, Bordeaux Sauvignon, pear. Um, fresh pear, a little bit of tin pear too. Uh, I, 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 the two things I notice: it, the extra, uh, the extra richness, but also the, because it's a year younger, the extra freshness comes through. Tasty wine, uh, not too complex, but uh, it's got juiciness, it's got um, freshness, it's got zip, uh, some citrus uh, zestiness, and then this uh, richer, uh, rounder pear character. Um, 
I'd, I'd drink that by itself, but I'd be very happy to uh, sit sit there and dig in with. Um, I like lobster. I, maybe yes, I think it's rich enough for lobster. Hey, let's get. So we've done two French ones. Uh, we're finishing with two South Africans, but sandwiched between them, two New Zealanders, both from Marlborough, both 2012. And the first is first is Jackson Estates Stitch, um, named after the Stitchbury family who founded Jackson Estate. Well, as I was saying at the start, I've, I've already tasted this wine. But the interesting thing is tasting it or smelling it now compared with um, um, how, how it was uh, a few minutes ago when I first came across it. Uh, it then it smelled quite rich and juicy and forward. So that it had the, the, the classic Marlborough, citrus, asparagus, gooseberry and the fresh gooseberry and uh, the gooseberry pie. And it was uh, like chomping at the bit going... <laughs> Here, it, 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 it feels like, yes, it's still got those characters there, but uh, there's more of a, um, uh, a river pebble mineral character coming through, uh, making it, uh, it, it's almost as if it's had its yap and now it's sort of curled up at your feet and uh, it's, still, it's still having a pant, but um, I'd better taste it, haven't I? Yes, and um, I still notice that, that gooseberry richness mixed with the herbs, mixed with the citrus, but um, it seems to be getting, um, it seems to be relaxing. Uh, and not being try not not brushing against your leg quite so much, shall we just put it that way? And uh, all the better for it. I mean, I'm not saying suggesting it's going to be a wine uh, that you want to keep for any length of time, but um, um, it's been it's all the better for having a, an extra uh, quarter of an hour uh, between the tastings. Let's try it. See whether we can say the same about uh, wine number five, which is Dog Point Sauvignon. Give that a whirl. Now Dog Point does uh, a couple of Sauvignons. Uh, this is the entry level one. Their top one is called Section 94 and it's from a particular block of their vineyard uh, and uh, they do, I think they do wild yeast fermentation in barrels, old barrels, maybe there's a touch of new barrels and they give it a bit more aging on the lees and you end up with something that's uh, a, a, yeah, creamy, it's almost like Burgundian Sauvignon uh, with a briny character as well. Uh, here it feels like a, a little more conventional but still um, in terms of it, well comparing it aroma wise with the with, with the stitch feels a little bit more backward uh, maybe not as uh, quite as much of the uh, forward gooseberry richness and more of the mineral restraint yeah the stitch is the wine for now this feels like a wine that's still uh, got a little bit of uncurling to do it even after I mean the first time around it was uh, it was quite dumb it's it's relaxed a little bit um, uh, but uh, Yes, yeah, still flavours to develop. So I like the citrus, I like the uh, uh, the, the the lime and uh, an, an apple, uh, but I think that um, I think that, that there's more of a there is a touch of the brininess that I get, I get on the, the the section 94. Uh, but I think that, that there's more of that uh, mineral character that's going to uh, emerge with time. Um, I I drink this. I, I like the stitch now. I I think I it ultimately. Dog point slightly better, but not much in it. They're, they're both they're both pretty tasty. South Africa. We're going up in alcohol. I don't know if I said that. Eleven and a half, twelve, um, then thirteen for this stitch, and then the last three are all thirteen and a half. Uh, so uh, whoever said Sauvignon was a uh, crisp light wine. Uh, maybe um, it's not fully accurate. Anyway, wine number six is uh, Tesco Stellenbosch Sauvignon, uh, two thousand and twelve. Give this one a whirl. Now there's something here that I call a benevolent pondy character, uh, and I get it, it's a character I get in uh, quite a lot of Loire Sauvignon. Um, some people say it's, is it sulphur related? Is it soil related? I'm not a winemaker and I'm not a geologist, so I can't be precise. But there is this it's quite pungent, uh, ever so slightly nutty, um, yeah, nutty green pungency uh, that reminds me more of Loire. Um, sometimes um, I, the Sauvignon in, in South Africa. Um, it's it's still it's still work in progress, and uh, uh, there are a few places that, that that excel at it. There is a few producers who I think pick it far too early. And you end up with these rather they're distinctive green peppery wines, but uh, distinctive doesn't necessarily mean drinkable. Here uh, it feels like a quite a restrained style, and um, it smells interesting. And that's uh, yeah fascinating because it's got this. It smells like it's going to be quite not surly, but um, it smells like it's not going to be really big, full and forward. And then when you come to taste it, that's when the 13.5% richness kicks in. 
and it doesn't come across as uh, heat, which higher alcohol uh, can, can sometimes do, but it, get, it gives you the impression of there is definitely a wine here in your glass. Um, and um, a very, quite a different style from the, uh, the, the two New Zealand ones, but um, equally, uh, equally valid. And uh, I, I mean, I, I can think of some times when I'd want, I'd want the dog point, and I can think of some times when I want this. Maybe the dog point is more seafood, uh, shellfish. Uh, maybe this is something that's got, it's got, it feels like it's got a little bit more richness and, uh, and power to it, and um, maybe even bring on the, uh, some of the, the poultry. Wine number seven. Hey, I think we're actually going to get to the end of this one. Whoa. Wine number seven uh, is Nederberg Wine Masters Reserve 2012 uh, Western Cape. Give this one a whirl. Actually, I give it a whirl and um, it's there is wine slowly coming out. The first few times I, I swirled it there, it, it felt a bit dumb. Slowly, there's a uh, a rounded, uh, vague citrus jelliness coming. It doesn't. It doesn't smell like it's going to have uh, uh, too much uh, perky class. But uh, let's taste it. And it's okay. Um, it's um, quite. It, it it hasn't got the crispness and uh, poise of, uh, of of the good wines here. It's rounded. Um, soft is the wrong word. There, there there is there is a bit of crispness there. But um, there's nothing that makes me want to um, demand a second glass, let's just put it that way. Uh, it, uh, bit of jelly. Um, I, not my favourite, I'll just put it that way. I, I prefer the, uh, uh, in, in South African terms, the, uh, the Stellenbosch one from, uh, from Tesco. Uh, I, and that, I think, one of my favourites. That dog point and uh, the rum around town to start with. But... Um, Interesting set of seven wines, interesting circumstances for the filming, and uh, I think I've got to the end. I'll see you soon.